Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Busting Life Challenges with me, Diane Parker. And today I'm really honoured that my friend and coach, Sebastian Colner, has come to join me to talk about a programme that I've recently been on with him in so much how that can reach out and help you. But first I would like to ask Sebastian, how did you start this journey for yourself? Well, how did I start this journey? I suppose I was born. No, but... <laughs> 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 and uh, all, all, all kidding aside, in a way, that's when the journey started, but I didn't know it for the good uh, 35 years or so. Um, you know, if you'd met me in my teens or 20s, I would have said, I don't have emotions. I'm driven. I go do what I want to do and I get it done. And you might have told me that, oh, Sebastian, everyone has emotions. And I would have said, no, I don't have them. It's just true. But my experience was all like just up here, yeah. up below the neck. Now, as you might imagine, that does come at a toll. Right. And so I noticed for quite a while and I went about personal development books and reading and doing courses and all this kind of stuff. And I came up with all kinds of ideas and I always try them out. And after a while, either a new idea came along or this one just fell by the wayside, but nothing really changed. And it was when my third child was about to be born that I realized I could no longer ignore the fact that something just was off by right? checking all the boxes six figure job and house and family and all that. And still I didn't feel right. And that's where it loops back to when I was born. I somehow got to a guided meditation by Marissa Peer and found, at the end of it, found myself bawling my ass out on the living room floor, like the guy who didn't have emotions because somehow that had taken me back to very early childhood memories and it clicked. It was the sense of, I'm not good enough and I have to earn love that really was always there in the background. And when I got up and cleaned off my face, I knew that's what I wanted to do for other people. And that's when I stopped reading about personal development and started doing it, trained with Marissa Peer, then went on to pursue the question of, well, I'm not the only one who's outwardly successful, but inwardly miserable. So how does this happy thing work, right? And that's what got me to positive intelligence and Shizat Shemin over at Stanford. And the third part in that is, I built, started building my own coaching practice. And here I was, right? This was my third, fourth entrepreneurial venture. The first three were dismal and failed. And this one wasn't really taking off either until I went deeper into some more of my personal stories, not just about my own value, but also what are the stories around money that I have? Why do I declare that I'm going to build a six or seven figure business, but I don't do what I need to get there? And removing those blocks somewhere earlier last year, then actually helped me to break through to, you know, five figures in a month. And now I find myself helping other coaches upgrade their money mindset so that they can align it with their business goals and create the impact and the revenue, the financial freedom that they strive for. We always talk about it's not about the money. And when you're mm -hmm. coming into, especially the course that you and I have met on, it was, for me, it was about how do I get out and serve more? And obviously then, obviously there's an exchange. So you do get some money. And at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with earning money. But what was interesting is how the whole of this time has been not about the money. It's about doing more deep diving and getting the stuff that we've been dragging with us. And even when you think you've worked on it, Oh my goodness. I mean, the, the course I did with you was just like, oh, impact wise for me, NLP, the grief recovery and your course. And um, I'm certainly grateful that you went and did all what you did to make it happen. <laughs> so where do you see it going for you in, in going forward? Are you going to have more groups? Are you going to have more courses? How are you going to do it? Well, what I found in what I've done so far is a, it's a bit of both. I really love working one-on-one -on -one with individuals, right? Because you go really, really deep. Yeah. And, and I create a space for those individuals to remember who they truly are. That's powerful and I love it. And at the same time, in the group program, right? For, for certain things that I know that at the beginning or a certain stage of the journey, when you bump up against that target you've set and somehow you find you're not implementing, right? There's often, very often, a defined set of stories that are holding you back. As you said, it's not about the money, but for a lot of us, very emotionally charged beliefs and stories are linked and tied to money. 
right? And yeah. so yeah. that's what comes up, right? If yeah. um, like me personally, what I found is one, I grew up in somewhat scarcity. Yeah. So there was always that. And having grown up in the Eastern part of Germany, people around me always said, well, people who have money are either corrupt or evil or bad in some way, shape or form. And of course, I didn't want to be one of those. So, yeah. right, whenever it came to creating money, um, I declared that. But the more important part of me that I was really committed to was this, no, I'm a good person, right? And yeah. sometimes it's that simple. Sometimes it's a lot more powerful, but it's often very deeply ingrained. And so in a way, even that isn't about the money, it's about the identity, right? It's about good and evil often because of yeah. how a lot of us grow up with it. And so that's why I find it so fascinating and rewarding for me to work with small groups mm -hmm. and bringing them together around a, one, just a conversation around money is really in a lot of cases what we did, right? In the Money Freedom Mindset Program. Yeah. And to combine that though with powerful transformational coaching methodologies. Like we'll do a deep dive in the beginning and really understand what is your relationship with money, right? No, no judgment, but get really clear on what's your blueprint. Like what have you been operating on subconsciously? What is your autopilot driving on, right? And then you can look at how does that align with what you're trying to create? If it does, great, but then you probably already have the results that you're after, right? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, then we can do the work on upgrading those stories that don't align. I mean, you've gone through the process, yeah, yeah, right? And one of the powerful examples I have from another fellow coach is her stories didn't even reach that far back. She built a seven-figure business before and then shifted to coaching. And she was starting really well and all of a sudden, her business stalled and she couldn't quite figure out, I, I know everything, I've done this before, why am I not doing what I'm doing? Well, when we dove deeper, what happened with her previous business was first, her husband walked out on her saying, you care more about the business than you care about our relationship. And they had an ensuing year long battle over that very business. And three weeks later, her mom died of a heart attack. So what was the story there? If you're financially successful, it hurts your relationships and might kill the people you love. Yeah. And when you have a story like that, are you going to go all out and build another seven-figure business no matter what goal you set? No, yeah. you won't. Yeah. But as soon as you become aware of that story, adjust it, right? Align it, clear what you get to clear in the process, the resistance is gone. And all of a sudden, you find yourself more easily moving forward and going. I mean, that's a coach that I now look to her for ideas for how to build my business because she knows how and just got that story, right, to work through. For a lot of other coaches, when you experience this in our conversation, there's another big thing though, when it comes to money. Why do we coach? Why did I get into this? I had to go through this myself too, because I care, because I give, I wanna help people. What about receiving? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, if you're an impact-driven entrepreneur, coach or otherwise, you do this because you care, you give. You run to the aid of your friends when they're sick and you get mad at them when they don't ask for help. Yes, it's yeah. true, isn't it? Yeah. And what about you when you're sick? Yeah. Do you actively ask for help, right? How do you respond to receiving compliments? Again, it's not just about the money. You find this in all walks of life, yeah. in all areas, right? Yeah. And if you're not open to receiving that, yeah. you're likely not open to receiving money. And if subconsciously you don't actually want it, you feel somehow you don't want it or deserve it, your brain is brilliant at finding ways to make sure you don't. Yeah, yeah. Right? We don't sabotage ourselves. Yeah. We're just really committed to competing values and usually to the more emotionally charged ones, there's a stronger commitment. That's what often gets in the way between building a business that is struggling and one that is thriving and creating the impact, right? The clients that you want to coach that you're really after. I love the little simple stories that you throw in that you can then relate to other things because then it makes it a simple thing to grasp instead of having to think you have to analyze everything. Um, and I know that when I did the blueprint with you <clears throat> in the session, it was more a sketch. And then when I had done the work on myself, I could go back and bring out more. I mean, I'm talking, I had an A5 an A thing of just maybe one and a half pages and by the time I did it, um, after I'd done the work with you, there's like four pages of A, four pages and both sides. So it's great to 
allow yourself the space to do this work on yourself and remember that you know life is this journey that we're on there is no right I'm gonna be fixed and be able to do this because life's evolving and things keep coming up and keep happening so um when are you doing your next program um depending on when you hear this, I would probably say likely in just a few days or weeks. No, seriously. Um, <laughs> if, you know, if, if you find yourself uh, listening to this and you say, you know, there's something here, um, contact me, we'll have a conversation and um, I'm planning on running these regularly. So there'll be a chance to, you know, get in, but let's have a conversation first about where you at, where do you want to be and make sure that it's a good fit for you and that it will help get you there. Right. Because, um, part of that is a personal fit and part of that is really having that conversation yeah so um, and the, the other thing I would add to that is how do you know that there might be something there for you to look at I think one of the symptoms you find is you've done a lot of how-tos right you went and bought on how to courses I mean that was my journey and I'm projecting here but I spent well into five figures on how to do marketing, how to do leeching, how to do this and that. And then I didn't get the results. And the guru would say something along the lines of, well, then you didn't follow my process correctly. Yes. And you know what? To a point, they were right. I didn't. Mm. Because my, right, my own resistance, my stories got in the way. Yeah. Once I upgraded those, once I worked through those, like what you've described, right? Peeling back the layers, going deep into them, finding the key stories that are between you and actually receiving, being open to receiving money, the resistance falls away. And it's not like I didn't know what to do, but now I'm actually doing it, right? Having the conversations, reaching out, simply also making the invitation, making the offer. This is, I mean, uh, quite frankly, to get to five figures a month is not rocket science. It's about overcoming your fear on the one end. And in my experience, upgrading your money mindset to really embrace what you're trying to create and align with it. So true. I love listening to you. Um, one of the things that made an impact on me too on the course was when you introduced the idea of getting a picture of yourself when you were a child because all the work I've done has always been going back to things that had happened to try and um, heal them in that in that moment when you do timeline type therapy and things like that um but to go back when actually things were good things were flowing to you as a um I picked a three-year-old me picture of that which I still have as a screensaver on my phone I probably will do just to remind me of when you're going to say something harsh to yourself to stop but the impact and the learnings that came out of that for me as well wow and it was beautiful to go back to something that was nice a special moment when was that part of did you develop that or is that part of the course that you were do, you were doing no i well that i can't take credit for uh, as is the case with most of the things we do as coaches right we we learn them yeah, yeah. but, but this in particular what you're yeah. what you're referring to is out of the positive intelligence program right I, yes. this concept of mental fitness developed uh, by shazad shamin over with his team in stanford and i've gone through the program and the advanced program and um whenever i work with clients who haven't gone through it yet I find a way to include it simply because it's a powerful transformational approach in that it's very practical, right? And for me personally, uh, not only have I seen how it works uh, in my own experience and now with lots of clients, it also aligns wonderfully with the premise I have as coach and most coaches share is there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing broken, right? The, the experience you described is the premise for my work. You just forgot. Yeah. And putting you in touch with that, what was there, right? Um, puts a certain energy and stability in for your transformation. And then mental fitness, that the program, right, that you described in there, then is all about building three core muscles. One is we all have our own internal board of directors, as I like to call them. I love that uh, in, one. In, in I love positive that intelligence. One. 
we call them saboteurs and right all those voices in your head yeah. right it's like not who not whoever has voices needs to go see a doctor those who don't right maybe you should check it <laughs> yes. if there's something something there right and and all kinds of characters right from the avoider to the pleaser to the hyper achiever and the controller depending on your personal strengths right Dif different characters are more pronounced than others but the one we all have is the internal critic the judge right it comes out of the survival part of the brain it's the one that finds what could be wrong or what is wrong often with ourselves and others. And the most sinister way that is often overlooked by those who say, yeah, I have a critic, is this part about judging circumstances, right? This, this idea of I will be happy when, yeah. or this shouldn't be this way. And then mm -hmm. you put all your energy into what you don't want, right? Yeah. So the first part of mental fitness and really working through that is, how do you pause that mind yes. chat, yeah. right? Then the second part is, how do you connect with the part of you that loves, that knows, right? Which is in this case, the sage or what you described, right? That, that essence inside of you, the, the perfect baby that you were born as, right? Before all that self-critical talking yeah. started, right? I mean, as a baby, when you start to learn how to walk, you fall, you fall again and all of that. No baby stays there and says, oh, there's walking business. I can't figure this out because it hasn't developed yet, that self-defeating mechanism, right? If that was already there, we'd all be still crawling around because yeah. only very few of us would ever get up, right? And then thirdly, even that program, even mental fitness training will not prevent you from getting triggered. It's just how hardwired into us, right? So it's a question of how quickly can you recover? How quickly can you get back to what you were doing? And that's the self-command muscle. And when you build all three muscles, as you've experienced, as I've experienced, as I share with lots of others, then you build up your resilience. And in performance, that's really, all, that's really what it is about, right? Things are going to go wrong. The question is, how quickly do you get back to being on course, to being neutral or in a positive mindset towards whatever is happening and here's another key distinction happening for you yeah rather than to you right those are the subtleties in what are the lenses that yeah. you see the world through yeah. what are the lenses that you see yourself through and that's how those things tie together with the money freedom mindset right mm. how do you catch your your negative self-talk and how do you go deep into your money and self-worth related story to upgrade the ones that are not aligned with what you do? Yeah. Oh, I just I just love listening to you all the time. But um, so what what's come for me, even listening to you now, going through all of that again, is get getting into that space where the energy starts to build up with excitement and, and you can feel the fun rising inside. And I had lost that part really for a good few years i mean that this last you know 18 months has been quite difficult for me um indeed since 2028 2016 when i lost my husband um but that energy coming back made me as i say you know feel high as a kite and not a drug in sight you know <laughs> just got that that wonderful feeling so that to me was one of the one of the greatest gifts too to connect with that again and peel back the the stuff that I've been dragging and looking at gifts of why we have stuff that arrive in our life um, that we do not see as gifts. They can be horrendously horrible, but when you look at them after and look sort of into them to see the gift in them and how that can release that from you and you can take your power back and go forward that to me is one of the best things ever thank you and thank in you for sharing last, that. in this last year and mm -hmm. if anybody's listening to this that is struggling with something in life that they're stuck with um i'd highly recommend that you get in touch with sebastian as, as soon as you can <laughs> because why do we want to drag these boulders around in our emotional sacks with us when we don't need to we can literally just put the damn thing down and get on with our lives in the way that we want to with this new outlook that we can get. All right, we trip up from time to time, but you know the tools to get you back to where you need to be. Well, thank you very much for that endorsement, Diane. I, I do appreciate that. And, and I would second it. And that is, let's look at a few examples, right? When things go 
wrong, quote unquote, right? In, in, in your days, in your business, right? You screwed up, you didn't sign the client, you whatever else, right? Is that, does that feel unpleasant? Well, yeah, because it might, it's, it's not what I wanted, right? And in that moment, all of this comes to bear, right? How long do I stay in that emotional space? And a lot of people might find this a tough act to swallow, but you really have a choice, right? And the only thing you can control is your response. You can't control what the client does. You can't control what the family member does. You can't control what your partner does. You can't even control what happens for you, right? Right in front of you. <laughs> yes. Now, you can align um, your, your, your energy in a way that you see more positive things, right? Mm -hmm. And just as it's true that whether you think you can or you can't, you're always right, right? Whether something is, sorry about that, whether something is good or bad is entirely up to your own interpretation, right? It's your words, it's your stories, it's your filters that classify it that way. Usually it's your judge that says, oh, this is bad and I don't want that, right? And the more you become aware of that, the more freedom you create to choose, right? And then it can become just as you can create a downward spiral, you can create the upward spiral, right? Then you see more positive things and that enlightens you and, <laughs> and that excites you. And then you go again, right? Do I celebrate every client that says no? No, I'm honest, I'm still working on it, right? Do I celebrate more and more of those? Of course, because I've had a great conversation. I've learned something, right? I might have found something that um, I'm gonna do differently next time. Mm. But most importantly, if, I mean, that might be a poor example because in that, I also have a different measure of success these days. Yes. Right, it's, it truly is not about the money in the terms of, do I need them to sign up? No, I don't, Yeah. right? When I am on the call with a potential client, my objective is one, to serve them and two, to really get them to the place where they can make the absolute best decision for themselves and that, it's not about selling, that's about coaching. Yes. I couldn't do that for a long time because there were all these stories about what I need and how I need to create my business. And you know, when I don't watch myself and I do it in order to create an outcome, it doesn't work so well, <laughs> right? But when you come from, it's truly not about the money yeah. and being fully present with the client, it's a valuable conversation. I do what I do, even in potential client calls. And that's a tremendous gift, no matter which way the client chooses to go. My way of shaking things off is just do a little dance. <laughs> just get those, get the energy moving <laughs> and let's crack on. Um, but no, and um, one of the things too, you introduced me to um, more so, um, I know it was another coach that first mentioned it and triggered it, but you work with them. Um, Abraham Hicks's principles in the coaching and I found that such a relief almost like reconnecting with those little recordings I was listening to them on YouTube and the ones that you rec recommended as we went and I'm still doing that because it helps boost this part to keep things going and um, do you know I'm I don't know if anybody is listening to this it might sound really strange but it's one of the best things I've ever done <laughs> in this last, certainly in this last 10 years, even, you know, to have had such a, a journey that I've had personally. And I mean, the grief recovery was done in that, in that time frame to help me heal the pain of my loss. But this has really got me back to connecting to myself, to me. And as I explained to you, when we started working together, that was my power word for this year. And then worthiness came on board when I started working with you as well. And um, to, to, to take those two elements and, and kind of say, build and work on them and that just get back to the essence of me 
has been such a gift and I can't thank you enough Sebastian for asking me to come and be a part of that course with you um so if anybody is looking to make some nice good shifts in their lives whether it be around money or want to find out more about their saboteurs how is how do they get in touch with you as would be connect with me on LinkedIn or just simply drop me an email and we can probably just link to that in in the notes yes. And, yes. and provide and provide that link and um, just reach out and say like, can we have a conversation because we'll be able to give them that little link to help them understand their saboteurs yes. because that that was really like oh my goodness I'm a hyper achiever no I'm not Yes, you are. It yeah, says so on this let's, call. Let's let's put that link in here too. I mean, that's not mine, right? That's that's yeah. over at Shizad's website, which is perfect. Because um, anyone who's not curious, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. I would recommend you go take. It takes about two minutes or so, and then read over the top two or three saboteurs that come up. Now, mind you, the judge isn't going to come up because we know it's there, so that doesn't get tested, right? It's it's sort of the accomplice saboteurs, and what you'll find is even just taking then a few minutes to read over the top two or three will help you probably recognize a lot of things that at some level you knew mm -hmm. and also clarify a few things with respect to what are the thoughts that might come up and be related to it yeah. because in very practical terms if you don't have the time to go deep or until you have the time to go deep often it already helps to just catch it and say my judge says that was stupid that's not how you would ever really talk to yourself right or um, my pleaser says I should really make sure they feel better well, when you catch it and you and you label it as my pleaser says that, it gives you an opportunity to check. And what do I want? Where is my boundary? And how can I come respectfully right from my boundary and enhance the harmonious relationship without completely gone overboard, right? And so you can go through each of those characters and get back to what is the actual strength, right? And where does it become dysfunctional, if you want? Yeah. So let's include the link to that as well, because it's a fun, quick little assessment that, yeah. especially if you have a coaching background, will give you a lot of insights already too. Absolutely. Well, Sebastian, thank you so much for joining me on my podcast today. I have done a little detailed blog um, about my journey with Sebastian. If anybody wants to check that out, I'll drop the link below as well. But for now, Sebastian, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure, Diane.